In today's episode, I'm going to talk about PLA, specifically protopasta PLA. And for that, I brought in Alex from Protopasta. How did I get here? Right here at Filament Friday. This week's episode is brought to you by these Patreon supporters. So I've used a lot of protopasta filament. I've gotten some samples from you guys. I appreciate that. I've bought a lot myself. We've even got the Chep Candy Apple Red, which I helped inspire you guys yeah. to uh, create. I love this filament. I've printed things like the Filament Friday sign, the dice that I did in a previous video, electronic dice. Um, so what other types of filaments do you guys offer? Textured, sparkly filaments as of late, okay. which has been a lot of fun. Um, so the Candy Apple Red was one of the early um, inspirations. High Five Blue. High Five Blue was the... I've used up. Was the second sparkly thing after our uh, first Stardust, which was just pure glitter filament. Um, High Five Blue is the first time we did like this more metallic finish, like really sort of automotive like inspired. Here materials. I've got some stainless steel yeah. that I've actually printed on the Ender 3. And here's two samples. I've got... This is a rough one straight off the printer. This is one I put on a buffer wheel for like 15 minutes. So you can actually polish this up yeah. and get a smooth print. That's pretty normal, right? Yeah, the composites are really, really fun. Um, so we have five metals right now, steel, iron, brass, bronze, and copper. And um, we started with the steel and the iron. One was intended for like polishing. One was intended for rusting. With the brass, bronze, and copper, you can kind of go both ways. You can either polish or you can patina. But this is still PLA based. You're just, it's the additives and, and materials that you're adding to it to make it unique, right? Yeah. So it's, it's still the same temperature range. It's still pretty easy to print. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's really, it's like easy to use, but you can make some really unique stuff. And another one that I like is this is actually magnetic or it's, it's an iron core. It's like, right. That's it. Yeah. So that has iron powder in it. Um, and you know enough that it not so much that it doesn't take away from the printing experience but enough to make it interesting and useful for magnetism um, from the functional side or from rusting for the aesthetic side very very nice and this these are just some uh, rare earth magnets stack of them but it's it's holding to the plastic which is really amazing that you can do this with a 3d print so you offer a lot of HTPLA, but you also have PLA and a few other materials. But for someone just starting out with 3D printing, mm -hmm. what is the difference between, say, a PLA and HTPLA? Yeah, I think the like the most the biggest change is really that it like retains stiffness, so it can hold form. Okay. So um, if you've ever experienced what what you might call melting your, your PLA melting in the car, right. it's not really melting. It just loses all useful stiffness. Um, because it's above the glass transition temperature. So it really just gets soft and starts to droop yeah. a little bit maybe. Or, yeah. Or HTPLA baked would get rid of some of that? Yeah, it's going to retain stiffness past that point. Ah, excellent. Because so, I know a lot of people will go ABS or higher temperature or different material, which is a little harder to print. Right. So HTPLA could give you the capability to do something, say, in a hot car. Totally. And not lose that, that form. Right. Um, so what works... What's like easiest um, to use if you want the for a high temperature application would be like our carbon fiber filled HTPLA. Okay. And so if you're wondering the difference between just carbon fiber PLA and carbon fiber HTPLA, the the main point is that the carbon fiber or the HTPLA version is meant to perform at higher temperatures, and the carbon fibers help um, better curate that shrinkage process. Um, the change that the PLA goes through when it's going from amorphous to more crystalline. And in order to make that transition, basically you're taking your 3D print and you're baking it in a convection oven or... Yeah, at, at I mean the better the temperature control, the better result, but your home oven or, or lab oven or... And then at what temperature would you typically bake your 3D print? Um, I mean you can get a good result between like 80 and 120 Celsius. We usually choose like around 110. So you can about 110 degrees C, basically, is what you're saying. You would bake it at, and that's enough to change the crystalline structure that it now had. Now it can resist temperature 
uh, yeah, higher temperature stiffness and to maintain, a maintain its shape. Yeah, 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 exactly. So that's, that's not unreasonable, I mean, to cook it at, what is that in Fahrenheit? I don't even off the top <laughs> it's of my head. Like, it's like 225 F. Okay, so 200 yeah. so it's almost like baking a cake and <laughs> you're baking your print. You're not going to, like, hurt the material or what. And in fact, you don't even have to print. You can just break off a piece of filament, throw it in the oven, and see what happens in the, in, you know, see the change, feel the change. If you grab that piece of material... Uh, after being in the oven for two minutes, you'll feel it's still like like floppy spaghetti. You put it in there for another few minutes, and then it's still it's more rigid at the same temperature. Gotcha. Which is, yeah. And that way you can use it. So it's an option to still have the simplicity or the the ease of print that I find PLA gives yeah. you, but gives you the temperature resistance that say a, an ABS or some higher temperature material would give you. Right. So it's yeah. a nice nice compromise. Yeah. It. It really extends the usefulness of PLA. Alex and I have been talking a little bit. Uh, we're talking about heat zone on, say, a stock Ender 3 where the heat zone is really just a nozzle. There's no metal. It's PTFE tubing going right to it. Right. Versus, say, an all-metal hot end like some people like to go to where there's a channel where it's all-metal, PTFE, all-metal, and then the nozzle. Mm -hmm. So with your experience... How does it work? What's the best way to handle PLA as far as the heat temperature and settings and all that? So when you're talking all metal, usually you're doing an upgrade to increase capability past PLA. Um, there's a trend towards that. Like, you know, it's seen as like a popular like upgrade to just get higher performance. And that's true when you're trying to do materials other than PLA. But when it comes to PLA, like it's sort of overkill potentially, depending upon how fast you're going to be printing. The all metal would be overkill. Correct. Versus... So if you're trying to print fast and like you know the hot, the all metal hot end could make sense. If you're trying to print different materials, the all metal can make sense. If you're trying to print like relatively slow detailed prints in PLA, you're probably going to be a lot better off with the PTFE lined uh, version of a hot end. And that's because you have a smaller heat area where it's actually touching the heat is touching the PLA so you have more control over that smaller area than trying to control a bigger area of right the hot end. yes yeah, so you might have the same set temperature in these two but in the um, all metal versus the PTFE lined you're, you're probably going to expose the material to that temperature longer in the all metal than you do in the PTFE lined so if you're exposing the material for a shorter time you actually have more control um, in this PTFE line version, so you can get that detail control for fine, like fine detailed prints with PLA. Okay, that's the way I understand it. All right, that makes sense. That's what I was looking for. Well, this was really informative. I learned a lot. I hope you guys did too. But if if someone wants to learn more beyond this video about HTPLA or what you guys offer, where can they go? Yeah, a great place to start is proto-pasta.com. Okay. Um, there you'll find all of our products. You'll also find various blog entries to help give you a good experience with protopasta. If you still can't find what you're looking for and you need help, hit us up at support at protoplant.com. Okay, and I'll put a link to all these in the description below. Thanks for stopping by. It's been great. So how do I get out of here? Oh, I can take care of that. Thanks, Alex. We'll see you later. And I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.